So the important thing about a KJF is um, I personally don't believe that it's actually a superior strategy for playing as the allies. And uh, for that reason, um, I always recommend playing the Finland Shock KJF as a main line. Um, however, it is important to understand the KJF, and there's a couple of reasons for that. One is that um, people play it against you, and if you know how to play it, then you'll understand how to counter it a little better. I think a lot of people get caught off by guard by the complex defense needed to counter a KJF, although that's also shown in some of my videos that I've done. Um, but also, um, sometimes there's just a good opportunity to do the KJF, so sometimes your opponent messes up Japan. Either they make bad choices, or they have bad luck, and then it makes sense to play the KJF. And so I've had that happen a couple times to me lately. So it's just something to keep in mind that it's worth knowing. And so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go through a few games and just look at the USA 1 turn. And so I've got a USA 1 turn open here in this game. And uh, just to help me decide whether to do a KJF. And so most of them are going to be no. So in this particular game here, we start by looking at Germany. And the thing we're looking for is, is Germany making overall good choices or bad choices? I think overall Germany has made bad choices. And I say this because this is a very irregular first turn build. They should be building infantry on their first turn. And uh, the other thing we're looking for is, has Germany really made an investment in Africa? And the answer here is yes. So both of those things, making bad choices and investing in Africa, are things that would lead me to a KGF. Um, an investment in Africa is easy to block in a KGF and hard to deal with in a KJF. So already, just based on Germany, I would think I would not do a KJF in this game. But it's more important to look at Japan's turn. And the things we're looking for of Japan is, did they have really bad luck? Um, or uh, did they do things like build industrial complexes that really commit them to the mainland? Um, and I don't think they've done that either. So if you look at Japan's build here, they actually have built a relatively defensive build, only two transports. I normally would build three transports on the first turn. Um, and they have a fighter, which is useful in defending sea as well. So based on looking at this game, there's no way I would do a KJF on this game. Even if I liked KJFs, I wouldn't do one on this game. So maybe next game. Okay, here's another game. Um, in this one, Germany played a pretty meta opener. Um, 11 infantry, 2 artilleries, typical combat, captured Corellia with one unit, um, no real ship build and building or anything, fighters on Northwest Europe. So pretty pretty typical strong Germany oper, kind of the thing that I would play if I was playing Germany. Um, he did move his fleet up to the Black Sea, but that's kind of inconsequential. Um, Japan... Um, built actually a pretty defensive build, so two transports, two submarines, and artillery, and that probably was because I uh, f tried and failed to kill his submarine season 61 with my attack with UK. So he actually has full four transports plus two additional subs. So again, this is a no-go for um, KJF. There's some other things here, C-Zone 53 battle and whatnot that went badly for me, but all in all, um, I wouldn't touch this at all as a KJF. Definitely going to after Germany first on this one as well. So here's another opportunity for me to consider a KJF. Um, let's go over the moves here. We have Germany building a bomber. Okay, that's slightly favorable to KJF. Um, really bad situation from here in Africa, so I'm really strong here in Africa. That's also good for a KJF. Um, playing really aggressively here. Um, this is more of a KGF type move, leaving himself open to, you know, different attacks on the border sort of medium stack nonsense. Um, yeah, he's sort of an attack against West Russia that went badly. He lost a fighter and four tanks doing that. So this really, this situation kind of makes me think KGF. Then he didn't attack Season 53, so that makes me think KJF as well. I took Borneo, but he recaptured it. He's done okay along the border here, didn't send too much north, didn't leave himself open to a bomber attack. Um, this stack here is strong enough to survive. So he's not bad here. Let's take a look at what he built. He built uh, three transports, so that's a solid uh, you know, build for either either way I go. Infantry and a tank. I would have built three infantry, but this is pretty, pretty fine. Um, Nothing else particularly interesting. Oh, he tried to attack my fleet in Season 41 and failed. <laughs> yeah, don't do this, guys. Don't go after this attack. There's a way to do it if you send a fighter and then take the fighter as a casualty so you don't have to move your carrier, but all in all, it's too risky. Always leave this fleet alone. Um, this is a safe spot for them to run, and I think it's kind of foolish to attack it. So this is the kind of game, maybe if I really loved KJF, I might go KJF on this, but 
Um, I think I want to I want to take advantage of the trading that Germany did with USSR here and try and um, do a KGF and make Germany hurt a little bit. So this is going to be another KGF. We'll leave the KJF for another one. So here's another USA turn potential KJF. Let's review what happened. Germany built a very heavy tank rush build, which is going to make me want to attack Germany. He uh, to Corellia destroyer, Transjordan cruiser destroyer. He uh, did really bad against C Zone Seven, and then I countered that by destroying his transport in C Zone Five. Took out the submarine he used to take out C Zone Eleven. Got his battleship, took Transjordan. So it was a pretty typical counter recovery, except I have a battleship. Um, he might be able to kill the battleship if he brings these fighters over. Um, I don't know if he's going to try that, but this is a tank rush game, so this is really making me want to um, target Germany. Um, and Japan, who I have not even looked at their moves yet, they bought two transports and a bomber. So that's actually a somewhat defensive build, combat... Yeah, so this is going to be a KGF as well. Oh, look at this, he tried to take back Borneo and failed. That's hilarious. Okay, so this is going to be um, somewhat of an easy KGF game because of the tank rush. So I am not going to KJF on this one. Okay, so here's another potential KJF game. This one was a really interesting Germany opener, and by interesting I mean not good. Um, Germany started with a pretty bad build for almost any outcome. They built a bomber, a fighter, and two tanks. Um, pretty inefficient for KGF or KGF. Um, they took Gibraltar and they took Corellia lightly, and then they they won season seven, wiped out the fleet there, and they also killed that cruiser. Um, so it looked like they were getting ready for a sea lion because they had two transports in range of the UK. So I was able to counter it on UK's turn. So um, the uh, Season 5 transport I was able to kill with just a fighter, and I sent the destroyer and bomber after the battleship and killed it, losing both. So that transport is still alive in West Med, but he's trapped there now because I also killed the uh, um, submarine that was uh, off the coast of Spain there with my destroyer, blocking the transport from getting out of where he is. So um, that all in all turned out pretty badly for him. I grabbed France in the exchange as well. Um, so um, his Africa advance is pretty much stopped because he's got no more units in position that he can bring over with that uh, German transport. And um, he's not even sort of built up to the line um, by Egypt. So it may take a few turns to root him out, but he won't be surviving long in Africa. Now that's something I look for with a KJF as well, is you know, how strong is Germany in Africa, because being good in Africa is good for a KJF. So all in all, this is kind of a bad Germany for KGF or KJF. So it gives me pretty flex good flexibility about which way I want to go. Now, as far as the Japan situation, they built a complex in East Indies. Now, for me, that is a big green flag. Go ahead and do a KJF when I see a complex in the south like that. I mean, Thailand is just as good. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for this. One is that it cost him 15 bucks right off the bat. So he's invested in something that's not immediately fighting power, and he's going to need a lot of fighting power when he's targeted. Um, secondly, it uh, is not a great place to build units for a KJF. So, you know, he's building units, they're kind of way off to the west, um, not really much better than Japan, doesn't really give him an advantage as far as that. And, you know, it's maybe it's kind of a focus on India, like it's a good place if you want to strike India hard, like if you know it's going to be a KGF and you want to strike India hard. But now that I know he's doing that, I can kind of use Russia and USA planes and stuff and just kind of block up India and hold the line there and he'll waste a ton of resources there, either in some big fight or just stood off forever against it. So he's basically committed to fighting a two-front war as Japan, this sort of Burma-India line and then the ocean line against the USA. So um, all in all, I think um, it's pretty strong for KJF just based on that. He also didn't attack the Sea Zone 53 fleet off Hawaii. That's kind of a light indicator of KJF as well. Um, you know, killing that fleet's a good discouragement for KJF, so, but he didn't do it, so my USA fleet is pretty strong. So I think I'm going to do the KJF on this game. So I'm going to make the rest of this video following along the KJF versus this particular opponent. And um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a standard KJF first turn build. So that is two destroyers, two subs, and a carrier. So the subs are the most efficient here. Destroyers we're kind of building just because that's the change left over. It's good to have a couple of destroyers in your fleet. You don't want like 12 of them, but having uh, two or three is great. Um, the carrier is actually one of the most inefficient things in an ocean fight. 
And uh, it's just if you run the simulators, you know, dollar for dollar, carriers and fighters, not as good in the ocean compared to other things. However, um, I do have a couple of fighters that don't have a carrier to land on. Um, I've got basically four fighters and uh, one carrier, so having the second carrier is pretty efficient. So that'll balance well with what we already have. So I would say either, you know, a KGF, either is Japan or is USA, if you've got incomplete carrier sets, you know, finish them off, fill them out. Um, as far as combat, my first move is going to be to head down to Solomon Islands. So we're going to work our way south, you know, sort of Solomon's, New Guinea, and then either Philippines or Borneo, working our way toward that nice juicy complex down in uh, East Indies um, as soon as possible. So that ends the purchase phase. Um, combat move. So this is where we want to attack this island down here. I'm going to grab two guys from here. You may ask, like, why not grab the guy at Hawaii on the way by? Um, it can be helpful for defending it, but also if we ever want to come back with a transport and get more guys, that doesn't happen often, but if we do, um, it's easier to come back here than to come all the way back and grab this one. So, um, you know, it's there. Plus, if I want to build transports in the future, they can grab them in the future, right? I don't need to grab it now, necessarily. Bring the battleship down, fighter. So I got one carrier that can be positioned here and one that's going to end up here, right? So I want to make sure that that's uh, um, a good place to land for all my fighters. That's it for that. Now I have this bomber, and I think I can pick off this transport here, which is kind of cool. Because um, that prevents him from bringing more units into Africa before he dies. Two points to land left. But I don't particularly like that, because it means I'm landing here, or I'm vulnerable, or here. So let's not do that. We'll have to... Uh, I want to keep this bomber alive, so we'll leave it up to the British to deal with this transport. I'm sure they can manage. He's going to be trapped between two fleets anyway. Okay, anything else this bomber can do? No, and we'll just be heading him west then. Um, now, interesting situation here. Sometimes you get opportunities like this. Uh, I'm actually going to attack these guys. This is kind of a pretty even battle. Two infantry and a fighter versus an infantry and artillery, but I'd love to break this line up. And he's obviously trying to press hard on India, so let's just mess that up. Okay, that all looks good. And phase, coming on into the Solomon Islands, hit with the battleship. That's the way it should be. It's important to uh, try and capture the Solomon Islands when you come in because uh, it's uh, not only useful as an extra landing place for your planes, but it prevents your opponent from landing planes here. Like you could be in a situation where you know, your enemy has like a fleet here, and it's like one, two, three, four moves for a fighter. Or let's say that doesn't work here. One, two, three moves as a fighter, and then the fourth move is landing on there. And so you're really opening up opportunities for your opponent to do some crazy moves that look impossible when you give them a landing point right next to your fleet like that. So we're going to bring everybody over. I'm going to load this guy up with one, two, three, four. Land them there. Destroyer, fighters on the carrier. I'm gonna bring the bomber way over here as far as we can. Say to Hawaii. And this one here. Okay, bring this unit down. We're gonna bring this around to the defense of India, because he's gonna try and do a rush attack against India here, and I wanna try and stop that. It'd be pretty annoying if he took it quickly, like on turn two or three. Um, if he tries to take it later, it's just going to be his detriment, but if he took it early, he could actually get some benefit from it. Um, that's it. End phase. And then drop those guys down. Okay, so that ends USA 1, and uh, we'll move on to USSR's turn. Now, I've got a real advantage here if I can just keep a nice counterattack ratio. Anything he sends, I'm going to be able to hit back. So I want to be thinking about an aggressive um, Japan and also a sort of aggressive Russia and also sending guys down to help with India defense. Okay, so we're going to start by doing a count here on USSR. We've got one, two, three, four, and eleven is fifteen infantry, um, two artilleries, and three tanks. Seven, so fifteen and seven, seven. So we're about we're about two to one already. So let's try and keep that up. Um, I do it like that. Two tanks is not that nice though. 
4 and 4 is a bit too aggressive. Maybe we'll do it like this after all. 4 and 3. You know, we'll go for the extra infantry. 6 1 1. Maybe we'll build an artillery next turn. It's not a bad ratio. Okay, so normally here, if I was doing a KGF, I would retreat from Yakut. Um, and so not giving them an opportunity to use planes to attack this. Now I'd actually love for them to attack this because it would mean trading off infantry and distracting them from their maneuver they're trying to do um, in India. This attack is kind of a wash in a KJF, but it's definitely good in a KJF, so we're going to go for that. And I want to do some good work to maintain the border with Germany here. So he's put two tanks right on Ukraine. I want to kill those. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six guys in total. I've definitely got enough to take it all out, so we're going to do that. Uh, maybe I'll keep these tanks and infantry down here in reserve as much as possible. One, two, three, four. So my fighters can attack here and still get to India, which is what I want to do with them. <laughs> Try and make sure to hold that until the reinforcements arrive. Maybe we don't need two of those infantry. So two on two, three, six on three, three on two, two on one. Okay, that's pretty good. <laughs> I'm going to push hard on a guy who didn't build enough infantry. Make him uh, commit more infantry to trades and, and run down his infantry supply. Start killing off more tanks and stuff. Hmm. Well, I still want to go for it. It's Corellia. It's worth it. There we go. I got it for one. Ukraine. One hit. Okay, that's not fun. Uh... I kind of don't want to risk my planes. So, I mean, it's like a one in four chance of him hitting a plane here. You know what, though? That's kind of affordable. But I don't want too much trading because it's a KJF, so we're out of here. Uh, it's kind of a shame he's going to have those tanks uh, survive, but he got lucky, so we'll give it to him. Okay, and now I'm going to take advantage of this and retreat, considering I don't have the line. So I'm basically going to hold a line that's further back, because uh, I lost this battle. So let's see if I can hold both of these. Here he's got 1, 2, 3, and 7 is 10, and 6 planes is 16. So can I hold that against 16? Don't know if I want to. could abandon Caucasus, but that would be pretty irritating. If I try and hold Caucasus. Caucasus is a little more interesting because um, he's only got the tanks, so if I stack this up, also these fighters can't reach, so it's 9, 10, 11. And I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 4 is 9. We'll hold back two infantry to make it 11-2. That works. Boy, it sucks about losing that call. Ukraine battle really wanted to kill that. Okay, well, stuff happens. You know what else is dumb? I was going to land my, my USSR fighters in India and I forgot. Damn it. Oh well. Hopefully Japan doesn't have enough to take it. Let's take a look at the odds down here. He has got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... 6, and uh, 2 is 8. Ground units can come in here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 planes. That's 15. 16 if you count the ships. I've got 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 3 is 14. It's going to be tough. I'm going to have to... Uh, use this transport, um, and maybe even do a counter-attack here. I don't think my planes are in a good enough position to do that. I'm mean, really worried about losing India on round two, now that I don't have the Russian uh, fighters in place. It's too bad. Oh well. Back to you. Who's this game against? Winter War Captain. Alright, back to you, Winter War Captain. Okay, so we're back for UK round two. And we're going to take a look at what Germany did. He bought a bomber, 6 infantry and 2 tanks. 
Okay, so still kind of a heavy offensive build here. He took out my transport in season 8. France. Seizing Paris. Took that. Okay, season 7. He destroyed my fleet there. Um. Oh, season 7. Defenders held on. Defenders lost a destroyer, a fighter, and an aircraft carrier. Terminator retreated with a bomber. Attackers lost four fighters. Oh, well, I'm actually fine with that. Okay. So my other fighter just landed here. Bomber. So that really hurt his um, air force. Corellia. He stacked up Corellia with 12. Really can't do anything about that. Um, and he mobilized everything to Germany. Okay, so he's still kind of keeping the pressure on UK fleet here with 1, 2, 3, 4. I've got 1, 2. I built like a carrier and a fighter. Um, but I may not be able to do much here with the India standoff going on. We'll have to kind of see. And he didn't do anything with his transport. I'm really surprised he didn't try and, you know, swoop around and drop. Maybe he didn't have any guys in drop range, because he had Italy abandoned and he had France was captured. Huh. Okay. So that's kind of interesting. I would like to stack up India. So let's do that. I could even play this as southern KJF defense, given how strongly I'm holding Africa. I can actually build an IC here and just forget about this, building this fleet here at all. It's kind of interesting. Um, a couple different options here. Because what I really want to do is make sure I'm defending this properly, which means I might lose this carrier as the fighter abandons. Hmm. I could sacrifice the fighter, the carrier, just to block him from bombarding. It's kind of nice too. Let's do one, two, three, two fighters, and. I'm going to build those into tanks, actually. Where is my AA gun? Oh, it's there. All right. Okay, so probably a desperate defense here we want to do. What if I had three tanks? Let's take a look at the odds on this defense, because he's going to try and pull this off. Um, with one, two, three, four, five, six infantry, the one artillery here. Ah, so you actually can't bring all these infantry. You can only bring five. One, two, three, four, five. Because the transport can't pick up this and this. So five infantry, one artillery, and one tank, and one, two, three, four, five, six fighters. That's brutal. And a bomber. And I'm going to prevent him from bombarding, either by bringing my carrier down or by putting a destroyer here. And I'm going to have seven infantry plus three tanks. And the American fighter and two British fighters is three fighters. So that's 55%. I really like that, actually. So that's going to be holding that at um, making it kind of a 60-40 for him, which is really what you want to be giving Japan is a tempting battle, but one that is not certain. I'm trying to see what happens if I reduce the tanks a little bit. Yeah, we can make this a 50-50 by only building one tank. And that leaves me with six. I think I might just save. Okay, we'll do it that way. I'm trying to give him a 50-50 here. I want him to really wear himself out, maybe lose some planes um, attacking this, or just have to not take it, which is also good. So could I counterattack him here? I think not. He's got five units, and I really just have the only... only the fighter is the only attacking unit that can come. Um, so I think I'm going to kill this transport with the destroyer. Can this fighter reach down here? Yeah. What about this battle? What have I got? Four versus six is not good. Oh, it's considering the other's contingent. But anyway, yeah, I don't want to do that one. What else do I also want to do with this transport? The only thing I do with this transport is actually pull extra defense back to here. What if I had an extra two infantry there? That'd be 79%. That's pretty clean. Hmm. What 
what if he then, what if I did not sacrifice the carrier and he was able to bring his battleship and cruiser into the battle? 3060? 3565? It's kind of nice. And what if I kept the fighter out? That's a totally different battle. That's now 5838. If he has to bring one survivor, 6730. Hmm. Bringing the transport down is kind of interesting. Oh well, let's just do this one battle and then we'll take it from there. End phase, combat, no combat to speak of. Okay, so I'm going to pull back here to defend this point. Drop my fighters here. I think I am going to sacrifice the carrier because the fighters are already sacrificed as it is. So they're not, they're, the carrier is vulnerable no matter what. Um, pick up two infantry and drop them here. Now, of course, everything changes with these units when um, you're doing a KJF versus a KGF. I think I'm going to bring them in and align them with um, the Americans for extra defense. Can I put my sub in a more aggressive position? Destroyer's here. Yeah, sub could be one step forward, as long as I have sub's retreat on. And then the cruiser can join the main fleet. This weak German play is really letting me focus on Japan, and uh, this is going to make for a fun KJF as a result. So I talk about you know KJF looking for an opportunity where your opponent is kind of almost asking you to do a KJF, and uh, you'll find it's more rewarding. 12, 13, 14, and 5. I think I could hold this as long as I take out these two with Russia, so let's drop the fighter there, get him in the game. Okay, that looks good. Mobilize, tank here, infantry here. So by using two fighters in UK, I give myself the flexibility of building a carrier later and starting a fleet here, or just kind of flying them over to USSR um, to reinforce the defense of Moscow. So I get fly and even defending against, say, a sea lion. So it's kind of the, the standard safe, do nothing, non-build as UK rather than saving. If you're ever looking for a non-move like that. Okay, let's end turn. And uh, you know this carrier is normally lost on UK1, so losing it on J2 is really not the end of the world. And over to you, Japan. Okay, we're up for USA round two. Um, starting to look at what Winter War Captain did for Japan. He built another industrial complex, so he's doubling down on his southern strategy, which is fantastic, because now all I have to do is hold India here, and I can completely... Um, waste everything that Japan was trying to do. Need to make sure I can hold it this turn. Um, he has got now two transports here. Third one's kind of out of range. So he can bring one, two units standard, plus he can transport four more, that's six. Um, four fighters. His other planes are out of position. Oh, he went after the northern attack. Well, that's a disaster. So six land plus four air is ten. So he cannot take this. I could even, you know, kind of come out of here and uh, advance against him a little bit. So that's fantastic. That's a terrible build for Japan 2 on a KJF. It's like he's not reacting to my moves at all. He's kind of got a plan and he's going for it. So that's interesting. His total defense is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So I already completely outnumber him on the C, which means what I do want to be doing is building another transport. Because I need enough, I already want to capture all three of these islands. So probably two transports would be good. We'll load up the next one with artillery. And I don't need the other infantry because I'm going to steal this one on my way down. So the new, the first transport is going to grab this infantry and this tank. The next one is going to grab this artillery and this infantry. I don't want to overbuild. I do have these two transports too. That would give me with five. You know, I can afford to. 
So let's do it. And then um, what to round out my fleet with? I'm thinking I only have the three subs, so let's go with mostly subs. Maybe a destroyer. Hmm. Could even afford to upgrade this artillery to a tank. So that's good. So we're building three new ships, which is going to increase my ship lead to like four or five. So now for combat move, I could swoop in and try and grab something right off the bat here. Like this um, Philippines is free. If I were to go after Borneo, I would need support. And I don't think I'm ready with just what's here to survive an onslaught by this fleet yet. Because he'd be able to bring one, two, three, four. He'd be able to bring these fighters down into the battle and the bomber. One, two, three, four. So let's not do that. Let's just throw the transport away. Um, taking Philippines. And we'll bring in the bigger fleet for next turn. Nothing else I really want to attack, I don't think. There is a kind of a sneaky move you could do here where I could can opener his industrial complex by attacking Burma with this fighter and then try and swoop in with these three units against four. That's kind of crazy. I could do it with the with the Russians as well. Maybe next turn. We'll keep that move in our pocket for a future opportunity. I don't think there's anything else I want to do right now. Just sort of setting up next round. The other opportunity, of course, instead of Philippines, is I could, you know, take New Guinea and just kind of work my way across. What if I was at New Guinea? How would he be? One, two, three, four. Those fighters could still reach. One, two, three, four. As long as they landed on a carrier in the same position. And then the bomber could land back, say, in Borneo. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven planes. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve ships. So twelve total. I would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'd have to destroy or block it. It's not that fun in order to prevent this fleet from coming over. So yeah, kind of two target options. One is the uh, New Guinea with fleet support. I could even do New Guinea without fleet support. Just sending my fighters and then back. It's not bad. It does mean, um, yeah, I kind of like that. It's a little further for him to strike out. He could still reach there with a plane. But then he can't recapture this. I don't know if he can really recapture this. You know, too much of my fleet is going to be in range. He might be at risk if he tries to take this. So what if he tried to hold this with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13 defenders here. And I attacked with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah. He would be able to take this and hold it. So let's go after New Guinea. It gives me nice range from here. If he doesn't kill the transport, I can go lots of places. Let's just take it, and I'll figure out what to do with my units afterward. So end phase. Go after New Guinea. Got it. OK, so if I were to stack up here, what would that look like? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, versus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, I can't hold that. Let's not do that. I'll hang back here. If I decided to destroyer block him, I'd limit him to just planes, but it's still just enough because I'd only have the three four five defense, and he'd be sending like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven planes. So even with a destroyer block, it wouldn't be very effective. It's kind of too bad. Nothing else for me to do. I had to decide what I want to do with this fighter. He's not really needed down here anymore. But I'm going to keep him because it takes the pressure. It lets the Russians focus more on uh, Germany. 
Um, so I don't want to have like a three-nation army if you don't have to. So I'll try and keep the Americans south and the Russians north as much as possible, sending the Russians south only when I have to. Ooh, i got to move these guys. So I'll bring them up to here. It's going to take a couple turns before they're useful. Bring this infantry down so he can get on a transport next turn. End phase. Mobilization. And over to USSR. Now for USSR, I am at a dearth of attack power, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Versus, no, I'm short infantry. We're going to build infantry. I cannot take Karelia back this turn, but I should be able to knock out Ukraine and maybe stack West Russia. So let's do that. Do it like this. With one, two artillery, two fighters should be enough. Don't really feel like doing that. Let's see if we can hold West Russia. So if I stack it up with everything, one infantry to block the Blitz, what would that look like? 17, 18 guys versus 12, 13, 5 is 18, plus the planes. He could, he could kind of make trouble for me there. So I've got 15, 18, he's got 9, and 9 is 18. 19, 20, 21, 22. So I need to bring all of these tanks up to here, but we'll uh, we'll put the infantry down here. It'll give me some interesting um, other opportunities like can openers and stuff like that for the future. I'm feeling the heat of these tanks. Okay, that's it for USSR for now. I think next turn we'll have to switch to dead zoning West Russia instead of trying to hold it. And back to you, Winter War Captain. Okay, we're back for UK's third turn, and it looks like Germany took West Russia. He uh, lost eight tanks in the process. What is this? Nine infantry is 27, eight tanks is 48. That's like 75 IPC. And what did I lose? like 90 maybe so he got a profit on that as well and now I have no attacking units in range now as Russia in fact no attacking units at all I've got no fighters no artillery nothing it's kinda interesting <laughs> what an aggressive attack um, one two three one thing interesting is UK if I were to build a fleet here now he wouldn't be able to hit it with more than two bombers so if I were to do something like, say, a carrier and a destroyer and a transport, he wouldn't be able to destroy it, which is kind of cool, because he's really weak on the west here. This destroyer could join up later. It would limit my build down here, but I kind of don't need a lot of build down here because of uh, the weak um, advance. Let's do that. I'm going to build two artillery down here throw a transport up in the Atlantic. Germany has really weakened himself for a KJF. This is a pretty weak Germany. He's certainly playing the fast game, I'll tell you that. This tank rush is crazy. What did he build? Mostly infantry, two tanks, and he put the tanks here, so he's thinking he's gonna come into Moscow next turn. That's pretty sloppy, you know, because it really depends on me not capturing this, but I can just take this with infantry. So. I don't know what he was thinking there. It's easy to kill a tank with a pile of infantry. Especially if I, like, sacrifice Corellia. I mean, the Caucasus. Okay, for combat... Um... 
five, six. He's setting himself up to attack Egypt next turn, so I should retreat. I am going to take Burma. And I could come in here now and grab Philippines with the UK. That'll give him multiple targets. I kind of like that. It's a good chance to throw this uh, transport away for a good cause. Could do other things with it, you know, save it for sneaking on Japan later, but might as well just spend it. It's better to be focused, to be like one one party here, so if you can use up the um, the lesser ally for useful things, then um, you get that trading done with, um, you know, UK and Japan, and focuses on USA just getting stronger, right? Classic coordination move. Let's see how Burma goes. Got it. Spare infantry came in handy. Okay, I'm going to bring this destroyer out to here. Kind of dare him to send his bombers after it. I'm going to retreat to where my other infantry is here. So now he's only got four ground units he can send against India because of this, um, this situation with uh, me taking out Burma, because the infantry was there and the tank was going to blitz through. Can't do either one. Where's his destroyers? So he only has the one destroyer. That's fantastic. It's here. So the first he can reach is here. I'm going to place my sub here. And that gives me interesting options in terms of attacking, you know, other places in the north. All right. So that's it for moves. I'm going to end my phase. Mobilize my new... Atlantic Fleet. Two artillery down there. And it's back to you, Winter War Captain. Okay, USA round three, and uh, Japan has moved. So he recaptured the territory from the UK, and it looks like he also destroyed my US transport, which is okay. Kind of expected those responses. So he built a battleship. Interesting. Um, looks like he placed it down here, and uh, three artilleries and an infantry. So still building mostly land, still going after this push. He's got 11 and 4, 5, 11 and 5 is uh, 16. One of six planes is 22. 11 and 6 is 17, plus 3 new units is uh, 20. I kind of like that, so that's good. We can kind of hold it on those terms. Make him fight for it. If he wants to spend his planes taking India and lose the Money Islands, I'm fine with that. What's his actual defense here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 4 is 13. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... And 8 is 17. 1, 2, 6, 7, 8, 9. I think I could wipe out this fleet. I think he's made kind of a tactical error here. He shouldn't have tried to hold this, I don't think. Hmm. So, let's build an extra fighter, because I might lose one. And a bunch of subs. Let's see what this looks like. So this is um, a battleship and a cruiser and four destroyers. And a whole bunch of subs, three. And two carriers and four fighters and a bomber. And he's defending with two battleships, two full carriers. Okay, so I've run the numbers on this battle and not only does it look positive in terms of the percentage, it's about an 86 to 12 percent odds of winning, but I also really like the curve on it. And by curve, I mean if you go to calc.accessanalyze.org, down at the bottom there's a section called Defender IPC Losses in Excess of Attacker IPC Losses. And this is where you get to see, you know, which outcomes are more likely, and what it looks like is there's a big bulge sort of above the zero mark, 
where I'm expected to get a 12 to 64 IPC profit, probably around 40 IPC on average. And there's some really, really unlikely scenarios where I lose a ton of money. So, you know, there's one where I lose 14 IPCs, um, there's one where I lose 28, and then the worst ones, you know, only add up to about like maybe 6% in total. So there's a lot of possibility here. Also, I like this because um, I maybe could successfully retreat from this as well, and uh, or maybe the um, uh, UK could back me up. So I kind of have not a bad situation. Can I bring another fighter? Oh, look at that. I can bring another fighter. Well, that just stacked it further in my favor. That's pretty awesome. Okay. What's also cool about this, it pretty much, well, he leaves him with only three planes left in his Air Force and leaves him with just a battleship, so um, he's going to have a tough time even defending his capital after this battle, which means that even if, say, like Moscow were to fall in a turn or two, which I think is unlikely, I think it's going to survive the next two turns, I think I'd be in a winning position no matter what. So this is pretty exciting. Um, this guy's not in range of anything, is he? Yeah, just these dinky islands. Don't really care about them. Okay, let's do this fight. I think there's a good chance of this being a slaughter in my favor, so I'm looking forward to the outcome. Oh, I already got a hit on the carrier. We're off to a good start. Nothing on my threes. Okay, interesting. He got nothing there. One hit there. Okay, so I'm going to choose to lose a destroyer. Another destroyer. I want to kind of keep one destroyer alive, so one, two, three. Probably should have hit the battleship first, eh? That would have been smart. Okay, so let's look at the odds now partway through. His battleships are both damaged and my battleship is damaged, so I'm going to switch them in the calculator to damaged battleships. And he basically has two full carriers and these two damaged battleships, and that's it. So he's lost the cruiser, the destroyer, and the submarine. I am down to two subs and a destroyer for my, um, and I still have the cruiser, or five fighters, etc., etc. So that puts my odds now at 97%. So I've, I've tightened this up a little bit. Let's keep it going. I missed with the subs. That's a shame. At least my uh, my threes hit this time. He's lost both carriers. He's losing his carriers before his fighters. That's smart kind of thing you don't always see from uh, from people in their defense profiles. So Winter War Captain, knowing how to use his defense profiles properly. I like it. Okay, four hits here. Okay, so... Um, how important is that destroyer now? He's got no subs, so I don't need to worry. I've got another destroyer in the wings, so I'm going to lose the destroyer. And two subs and the cruiser. Okay, let's finish him off. He's only got four hits left here. I've got one, two, three, four, and five is nine. So this should be a nice clean kill in the end. Got them all. Oh, that's expensive. Okay. So what do I want to lose here? I could lose the spare fighter. Um, three more hits would be like a full carrier. What's my situation like as far as carrier balance? I've got no others on the way. So I could lose, hmm, I could lose the bomber because it's less useful in terms of like defending my fleet next, but then I'd still be losing, you know, more fleet here. So what if I did it like this? That would leave me with two carriers and two fighters and a battleship two carriers, two fighters, and a battleship, and he would be counter-attacking me with um, a battleship, two fighters, and a bomber. What would those odds look like? 76%. Hmm. On the other hand, if I lost the full carrier, things would be worse. What if I had one carrier less? Keep in mind, I also have the UK fleet, right? I have the um, the cruiser and the sub here. I could even attack this battleship with two fighters and a submarine. Hmm. So I think I'm going to keep the money because I think this fleet is pretty safe. So we're going to keep the carriers alive and lose the uh, lose the planes. 
that's pretty nice. So it looks like 37 IPC profit. What did I say about 40? So these things a lot of times turn out the way they're likely to, and this was not a very dicey battle, so that's what can be expected. Good. Okay, now I do have to worry a little bit about my reinforcements, that they are not vulnerable to bomber fire. He's got this bomber here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this bomber could reach. The fighters can't. So if I were to do this... I would have a cruiser and a dis and two destroyers is pretty good defense against that bomber. What if I positioned it further north? Like, what if I put one down here and one up here? It would put me in range of Japan, but it would also mean that I can't um, swoop in and grab these two money islands next turn, which I really want to do. So... Um, hmm... I could go north. What if I went like that? What's his bomber range there? Where's this bomber? One, two, three, four, five, six. He couldn't even, he could barely just reach. Well, that's fun. I could do both. These transports cover this area, and these transports cover Japan. What I want to get him to do is to turtle up so I can grab his income. I want to grab this uh, uh, industrial complex, this industrial complex, and kind of make this whole area mine. So, doing that is uh, putting that guy there. Is he really safe there? Fighters are one, two, three. They can't reach. Bombers, one, two, just to here. Three, four, five, six. Yeah, you can't reach. Okay. It's all safe. I'm going to leave it like that. This is sort of a turning point in the KJF now where I've, you know, because of his excessive land building, both the ICs and the land units, I've now completely overcome his fleet and I'm in a position where I can um, start to grab islands and whatnot. He can, of course, build up some defense on East Indies if he wants to. Um, so it might be a turn or two before I actually get that, but um, I don't think he's going to be able to defend both of these complexes and Japan for a long time. Okay, USSR's turn. So as USSR, I need to capture Western Russia. And I'm thinking I'm probably going to attack with three infantry against a tank. Four infantry would give me 93%. So I've got nine here to spend. So if I attacked with four, then if I build something like this, I've got nine. Uh, minus 4 is 5, plus 3 is 8, so I'd have 8 and 4. A nice balanced defense. Okay, because I want to be able to strike back when he tries to pile up his tanks next to me again. Okay, let's do this. 1, 2, 3, 4. What did I say, 4? Is that the number? Yeah, 4 for the 93%. I really want to capture that territory. I think I'm in deep trouble if he's able to get all of his tanks through here on a blitz. So I got him. And he hit me once. So I've got three infantry sitting there as dust, sitting ducks. I could have maybe done three infantry, but I really, really wanted to take that territory. Okay, so now what's cool is that Japan is not in a position to attack Moscow. Uh, this bomber is one, two, three, four, five, six. Can't reach. The fighters can't reach. So he'd be going two infantry against me here. So that means I could do something like this. And... Uh, his attack power here is now four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've got five, and I'm going to build four, making it nine. So I'm keeping the fight tough for the Germans, while still um, keeping myself alive. If he wants to do more big trades, and both our armies are gone. I'm fine with that. Maybe we'll do only one artillery here. What have I got here now? Three artillery? Oh, that's no good. i got to balance those. Okay, let's try that again. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's good enough. No, it isn't. I want the artillery to be with infantry. Okay. That should be fine. These infantry are ready to get involved next turn. And two infantry against three is going to be a joke. There's no way he can make that happen. So I'm not worried about a Japanese attack. 
Um, I am going to switch my U.S. defense profile to um, main because I'm no longer next to a friendly um, territory where my fighters can land. It's pretty important. Wouldn't want him sneaking in here and killing off the carriers and having the fighters crash. So better have the fighters die first. Okay. All right, over to you, uh, Winter War Captain, for Germany's fourth turn. And I think, given the war report situation, um, this is kind of a turning point. I need to start eating up some of this Japanese income now. He's huge because of how aggressively he's played on land. And it's cost him his fleet. i got to make it count now. i got to remember to attack this fleet. Two fighters plus sub. All right. Okay, Germany has moved, and his UK is round four now. Let's take a look at what he did. He bought two tanks, seven infantry, and a fighter. Finally starting to build some infantry, and this is where, you know, if you're doing an anti-KJF with Germany, you really want to be building these seven infantry like a long time ago. I think when you look at some of these past builds, too light on the infantry. Um, if you build the infantry earlier, you can get to Russia all at the same time. He hasn't done that, so now he's still not ready to take uh, Moscow even now. Um, despite some of the losses that I've had, and he's going to be dealing with this um, problem now, too. So, um, if I were to start attacking him more aggressively here, what could I do as UK? I mean, Berlin itself is not vulnerable yet. He's got seven defenders there. I can only bring one, two, three, four attackers, so not great. Um, what's good is that my other destroyer is caught up now, so if I have one, two, three, four, five total units here, I can position these guys, you know, somewhere a little closer, um, start grabbing France or Norway or something, and he can't do anything about it, so that's kind of nice. Um, I am definitely going to attack this. So, I want to build one infantry here, because I'm going to unload... Th there's three guys here, I'm going to unload two, leaving one, so I need to have one more. And it needs to be an infantry, because I've not been unbalanced. Three new infantry for down here. And then... I would like another transport, actually. Get me up to two transports up here, so let's do that. And that leaves me with eight. So what to do with eight? I could build another destroyer here, but it seems like a bit overkill. I could instead um, build some more aggressive units down here. Like I could decide to build two tanks. Maybe even make it three tanks. And that way... Um, I can start spreading out and grabbing some of this land back. So let's do that. And phase. Um, so let's do this kill over here. I'm going to take out this, not only the battleship, but also the transports, which is going to be important. A sub and two fighters is good odds against a battleship. It may not be entirely obvious. Now he's got 11 here. Without the transports, he's just got the other two follow-up is 13, meaning I've got um, 9, 10, 11, 12, maybe a fighter. 13 plus three new units, so I'm okay. I'm gonna risk sending a, a tank up here and try and take out Caucasus preemptively, give the Russians a little breathing room. This is five versus six, so I'm not gonna do this yet. Wait till I can get the fighters to support. And let's grab France, because it's the most valuable down here. So I think that's it. The cruiser is going to do nothing. I'm going to wait. I may need him to defend against this bomber, you know, striking against my transports. So we'll hold off on him. But I would love to finish off this battleship right now. And I got to hit with the sub. That's beautiful. All right, there he goes. All gone. And we'll lose the sub as a casualty. Perfect. Two fighters left alive. Let's hope we get some nice odds in Caucasus, too. This is a kind of a toss-up, so... Keen to see how it works out. Oh, it's a tie. Okay, well that means the Russians can now take it with one unit instead of having to send a bunch. Um, we'll land my fighters back here for safety. The cruiser can stay here with this fleet for now. And I'm going to align this fleet. What did I build again? Any fighters? No. If I were, then I want to make sure to move one of my fighters off so that the new fighter could land on the carrier, but I didn't. I also don't want to give him the satisfaction of wiping these guys out, so what I'm going to do is retreat them to here, and that way if he advances to Sudan, my fighters can go one, two, three, and land here, so I could hit him with five units plus two fighters and wipe his units out, assuming he stacks. If he doesn't stack, it might be a little more interesting next round. 
So I think that's it for non-com and phase. And we'll mobilize. Uh, three tanks down here, three infantry up here, and a new transport. I'm giving him lots of bad odds to take, you know? Like, he's got bad odds on India, um, bad odds to attack my fleet, um, lots of things he could do that are bad ideas, which is what you want um, in Axonalities. You want to make sure you're giving your opponents stuff where stuff that can go wrong um, so that they'll maybe try it. Okay, how are we doing on the war report here? 118 to 106, so I haven't really totally defeated him yet. I think I'm winning, but it's not right in a winning position. Um, the UK is stronger than Germany, which is pretty interesting. Um, 62 attack power versus 54 attack power. Of course, it's divided. I've got a big chunk of guys down here. So I'll be interested to see how this plays out in the coming turns, because Moscow is quite weak. Whether he can make the push and capture this in two or three turns, or whether I'm going to be able to stop him by bringing in reinforcements from wherever. Um, and of course now he is going to have to build infantry in Berlin to avoid getting sniped. Um, I've had games too where I've swiped, sniped Karelia with this fleet. It's kind of fun as well because he'll move guys into a strategic position and then maybe build like just two tanks here. And then the two tanks can be attacked with the fleet, so that's interesting as well. Let's see what he does. Pass it over to Japan. Alright, he's just wrapping up his mobilization here and it'll be time for USA round four. Um, it looks like he's kind of pulling back. This is kind of a more defensive position for Japan, so I kind of like that. He's built two tanks here in um, Thailand, which leaves open the possibility of a can opener attack. If I could just kill this infantry, the British could come through and take that industrial complex, which would be kind of fun. Um, let's go through his moves, actually, and see what he did. He bought two tanks, two fighters, three infantry. Okay. I think he mobilized nothing down here in East Indies. I guess he figures that seven guys are enough there. He's placed the two fighters and three infantry up in Japan, so he's getting into a defensive position here as well. Okay. My transports are not in range of Japan, so I control the sea. So it's important to maintain control of the sea and think about defending this area now that it's mine. I do have two transports here, so I can take Philippines and Borneo. So I want to be doing that, and then I want to think about how can I make sure that both of those transports are still alive at the end of the turn. That's important as well. So to do that, um, I really just have two, three, four. This is going to be the tough one, because here, if he goes one, two, three with a fighter, he can't land here. So really the bomber, only a bomber can hit here. So if I were to put, say, a battleship here to defend against the bomber, that'd be kind of fun. Then I could go to this fighter can't reach any of my carriers. I could leave the two carriers, two fighters, and two destroyers, and a cruiser here. So that's seven defenders versus five. That should be okay. So if we just do battleship here, carriers and everything else here, should work just fine. Um, as far as build, um, I might need to get another transport ready so that I can do some follow-up here, because I don't know if I have enough ground units to actually capture this East Indies complex, given what he's got stacked on it. So I could maybe just take these two and then deal with it. You know, build complexes on the next turn, build stuff on them, capture it later. But it'd be fun to kind of come in and take it. One way to do it here is if I build more fighters... Right now I've got three fighters and two carriers, so I definitely want one more fighter. I like the idea of building another transport, so let's do that. And I'll just build a tank for it, or sorry, an artillery, and then we'll, we'll follow up with one of these other infantry that's just lying around. Um, that being said, what can I do with the rest of my income that's useful? Like another carrier? And that way the new fighter is directly placed on it? Could do that. Um, I could do something like maybe just a bomber switch this to a tank, because the bomber can get involved down here later on, like build him here, land here or here the following turn, or here, and then go from there. There's some different nice options. Okay, um, what does that look like? Tank, bomber, transport, carrier. Uh, something's wrong. I do need to build a fighter because I have three fighters, fourth fighter balances my carriers. It's the carrier I don't need. Yes. Fighter, bomber, balances the carriers. 
and a tank. If I build an artillery, hmm, if I build an infantry, I could build a, another transport. Two transports. I also have these transports. Man, I forgot about these. Maybe I don't need more transports, because I've got these guys. If I can just keep these guys alive, or just be useful with them. Hmm. Lots of possibilities here. I am definitely going to want to build complexes on both of those next turn. Let's maybe go with just the carrier's build. So a fighter and then a new carrier with a fighter on it. Let's just do that. I don't think it's going to matter too much in the end. So two infantry here. One, two infantry here. And the battleship I'm not going to use for Bombard because he's going to end up in this sea zone down here afterward. I could always just use him there just so I don't forget. And then these transports here, if I send them to take land, say, in this area, they will... Um, they'll be left for dead, which I don't like. Why don't I send one? So we'll cancel the second tank. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, that's totally what I meant. Man, the interface is annoying here sometimes. Okay, we'll send one because Manchuria has no land units bordering it. And we'll keep the other one alive and maybe pick a unit up and drop down here or something like that. Find some safe spot where he can't be hit by uh, bombers. And then if he wants to attack this, it's going to be pure air. And if he doesn't attack it, I'm going to be able to build a complex there next turn, which is pretty cool. May not be able to hold it right away, but still building it as part of the fight. Okay, let's do end phase. I do like seeing no Japan fleet left. That's always a nice thing. Philippines captured. We're up to eight victory cities now in range of the sort of sweet spot for uh, um, the sweet spot for uh, VC sniping. Bring the subs over here so I can make trouble. This transport here, I would love to use this guy. Whoops, I unloaded. That's not what I meant to do. I want to pick up that infantry. So the bomber here can go one, two, three, four, five, six. He can even get me here. If I was here, I'd be safe. Huh. Five subs. Hmm. I'm going to send a few subs east because... Uh, I'm going to want to uh, to counter the possibility of a, you know, like a sea lion or something later on. But, you know what I did? I forgot to pick up this artillery. I totally did this with infantry and I could have done it with artillery. That's too bad. Oh well. Fighter can land on the new carrier or here. Not really a strategic difference. We'll put on the carrier. Yeah, missing that artillery was a mistake. That's too bad. To pick him up later with somebody else. Oh, you know, that was a mistake to put the fighter there because now I don't have to put camp on my second fighter there. He should have been here. Don't get sloppy now, TTG. So I'm in the lead here. Um, starting to grab Money Islands. It's great. USSR is in a really tight position. <laughs> um... <laughs> Maybe let's build a tank and some infantry. Okay, so let's go one, two. Send the artillery there. I'm gonna take this, and then I'm gonna use the other artillery to go here, the infantry to go here to block the blitz, and then we'll stack up for next turn. He has the ability to bring two units from Japan to attack. Ah, oh, but this one's blocked, so he'll be fine. Won't be worried about a can opener. All right, Caucasus. Really want this one because it's worth four. Nice. Need that income to build more infantry with. All right, non-com. Nothing exciting there. Just moving my infantry into West Russia to block the Blitz. And one, two, three, four. 
Five. Coming into round five for Germany now. Over to you, Winter War Captain. All right, UK round five. He has stacked West Russia, and probably I cannot kick him out. This is like eight guys, and I've only got like six, so... He doesn't really have a follow-up, though. I mean, his tanks are out of position, his bombers are here. I think maybe I could prevent him from taking Russia for another turn, which is great. Let's take a look at what he actually did. He bought five tanks for infantry to artillery, okay. He took West Russia, he took France, lost three infantry doing it, that's what I like to see. A little costly maneuvers against UK means less money headed toward Russia. Kazakh, he lost a fighter trying to do Kazakh, so this is a can opener, looks like it. If I go to combat move, he sent hmm, just two fighters against an infantry, so he was just trying to snipe out that. I guess he's trying to think he can bring his fight, his tank up here in the infantry. That's only two against five. Hmm. UK. Do I have the opportunity to VC snipe him here? Let's say as UK I were to take Karelia and France. That's two VCs. That would bring me to nine. Then if the US was able to grab um, Shanghai, the game would be over. So let's do that. Let's set myself up with the possibility of winning the game this move and uh, see where that leads us. It's going to be really tough for him to stop me from taking Shanghai because of the positioning of this transport, this transport, and these units are all in range, and he can bring very little defense. Like, he could land some fighters there or bring his tank over. I'll have to see if he sees it coming or not. It's too bad i got to bring myself to 9 out of 10 with the UK. It's always nice when you can do, like, three VCs with the Americans, and then they just don't see it coming. Okay, so I'm going to want four new guys here and three new guys here is seven. That leaves me with 13, so I can afford to build a fighter, so I will. And we'll go with artillery as the backup. This fleet may be in serious danger after this turn because of splitting it, but that's the cost of doing this. Send these guys here. Two units here. And a fighter to each one. Should be able to capture both like that. Um... I'm going to do 2-2 two, two, and fighter-fighter, although he's set me up for this, so might as well go after that. There really is no danger of retaliation from this angle anymore, so we could do it like this, actually, and just empty this territory. Get, get um, those Indian guys really in on the action here. Okay, this game might be over in uh, at the end of round 5. Corellia. Got Corellia, that's one VC, brings me up to eight. France, two VCs, brings me up to nine. And Burma. And Persia, I think, is next. And then we're fighting over zero value Sudan after this. Kind of battle might not end up being important at all for this game, but... Okay, four hits versus two. That's, uh, it's gonna be a victory. Got a bit of luck there, in addition to my superior numbers. So, this fighter... I think I'm gonna abandon this transport, maybe. Because, uh... What have I got here? Two destroyers. He's got no fighters in position of anything. So we could do two destroyers here fighter here, and then this fighter has to land here. I don't really like that. Okay, um, I do want to move this cruiser to here, and we'll bring the AA gun this direction. Fighters can land here, I guess. That all looks good. Can't wait for USA's turn so I can win this thing. Next. Pretty desperate for him is Japan, because he'd have to kill both of these units. Theoretically, maybe he could he could wipe out this fleet, and this fleet, and then land his fighters here, and the tank. That might do it. He might be able to keep the game going if he did that. So he does have a hope. <laughs> Such as it is. I 
Okay, back to you, Winter War Captain. Okay, I decided to peek in here, and it looks like uh, Winter War Captain is moving. He uh, did a couple of attacks, but he did not take out the fleets with the transports that are ready to strike on Philippines. So it looks like maybe he's going to do the thing of landing his fighters there? I don't know. I don't think he's in a position to prevent this win. It'll be interesting to see if he's seen it or not. Um, he also has to worry about his Japan capital. If he goes too much trouble in defending Shanghai, he's just going to lose um, Japan. What did he actually build? An infantry and four fighters. Yeah, so he's holding up. He's, um, he's just turtling in Japan. He's going to lose the game shortly here. So, good game. Um, I think this is not the way to do a KJF defense. I've got some of those demonstrated in some of my Axis series videos. Um, but uh, fun game anyway, and hopefully a good demonstration for you guys on how to do a KJF anyway, even if it doesn't tell you much about a KJF defense. I am going to do my USA turn pretty quickly here. Once he finishes mobilizing, see if he notices what's going on. Come on. Do you see it? he got left to place. Nothing. Yeah, just hit end turn. There we go. All right, game over for you. We're going to industry. We're going to build three industrial complexes. And, uh, I don't know, a transport. <laughs> Not that it matters. We are going to... Um, pick up a tank. Pick up this guy. Drop him here. We're going to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Um, take this out, this looks good, end phase, next phase, boom, 10 out of 10, haven't even started the combat yet. We'll take walk A just because. And his other complex in Thailand. End phase, do some non-com. Like maybe land these fighters. Next phase. Drop a couple complexes down. This is not one I would normally do on this turn had I not just won. I would be you know, thinking about positioning my fleet safely or bringing these guys up or something, but game's over, guys. Boom. Allies win. Axis 3, allies 10. Pay attention to your VCs when you're doing a KJF defense. That's all I have to say about that.